In tonight's Fox 7 Focus, UT Austin is in the process of building one of the most powerful AI computer hubs in the world. It could have huge implications for the future of many fields, including medicine. Joining us to talk about this is Alex Demakis, director of UT's Center for Generative AI. Alex, thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So what is this? You call it an AI computing cluster and a massive one at that, I understand. What is that and why is this such a big deal? Yeah, so uh, we're excited to be launching the new Texas Center for Generative AI, and uh, that center will be supported by a compute cluster of 600 H100 NVIDIA GPUs uh, hosted by the Texas Advanced Computing Center, which is, to my knowledge, the largest uh, cluster of its kind in academia. And that gives us a tremendous compute uh, capability to be able to train uh, the latest uh, AI models. So for those of us who don't know too much about AIs, maybe you have chat GPT on your phone, you have some sort of navigation app or something. Uh, it, it, for those of us for whom that is our understanding of AI, how, do, how does what you guys are doing differ from that and how is it similar? Yes, so uh, chatbots like uh, or uh, NLP models is one type of generative AI that's, uh, that has had already a, a very big impact, and I think it will have more. So we're definitely focusing on developing the capabilities of uh, language models like ChatGPT. But in addition to the language models, you can also think of generative AI uh, applied to imaging. For example, we have projects on accelerating MRI scans, uh, expanding MRI scans uh, to, uh, for example, ne neonatal uh, um, uh, imaging, which cannot be done currently. Uh, also, in biosciences, we have initiatives where generative models can design new proteins and new therapeutics, and uh, those are similar uh, technologies as ChatGPT, but they're applied in different domains that are have a very big impact in the world. I understand this could have big implications for vaccines. Tell us more about that. What types of vaccines are we potentially looking at? Yes, so uh, the COVID vaccine, for example, uh, I understand that uh, researchers from uh, University of Texas had already a significant impact in stabilizing the spike protein uh, that was used in some of the COVID vaccines. We have a big effort on cancer, and the AI insights are basically a way to automate the search process of how to find the proteins that should be considered, because it narrows down a search. Instead of having to synthesize, you know, a million proteins, you can synthesize 200, and 200 is something that experimentally people can do. And obviously, this is just one of the areas where UT, UT is on the leading edge of this AI technology. Give us a sense of what else is happening and, and how, how, uh, how widespread this effort is. Yes, so this is an effort that uh, has been uh, supported by uh, UT. We span the whole campus and we're also uh, exploring collaborations across all of Texas. We think that this is going to be an extremely impactful area of research across healthcare, imaging, language, education. Uh, and, uh, you know, we're very excited to be on the cutting edge of this research. How important is it that this is all undertaken in, in kind of an ethical manner? Obviously, people have concerns about companies doing nefarious things with AI. Uh, what's kind of the perspective from, from you as a university researcher on this, the ethical steps that need to be taken? The companies are uh, trying to uh, do alignment to make sure that the models are ethical, that there are guardrails for privacy, for security. But beyond companies uh, regulating themselves, it's important to have external validation or an open ecosystem so that multiple companies can innovate at the same time. Multiple companies or multiple researchers in universities can check. We think that this is the only way that you will actually have security and robust guardrails and uh, privacy protection is by actually making things open and having the open community evaluating them. And when do you expect this to all be fully operational? So some of our cluster it will be operational in a few weeks, and uh, we think that the full cluster will be operational in a few months, and we're very excited about that. All right, Alex Demakis, director of UT Center for Generative AI. Alex, thanks so much for being here and sharing your, your time with us, and we'll definitely have to check back and, and see how things are moving along. Thank you. Thanks for having me.